Hello, my name is Drake Short, and I'm a student at Oklahoma State University College of Osteopathic Medicine. I'm presenting Acute Rehabilitation Protocol in Recovering COVID-19 Patients with my colleagues Carly Williams and Dr. Kara Bunting. Long-term COVID-19 infection is known to have extensive symptomatology that can include cardiovascular, pulmonary, respiratory, neuromuscular, and psychologic systems. These complications can be acute, but they have the potential to persist as long-term sequelae. Previous research has demonstrated that acute inpatient rehabilitation benefits the long-term health and recovery of patients that have long-term functional deficits as a result of COVID-19 infection. However, COVID-19's broad effects can make these plans difficult, and typical measures of rehabilitation progress do not fully encompass the functionality picture that can exist in COVID-19 patients. A potential, a potential solution that we sought to research is to incorporate objective cardiovascular, pulmonary, and musculoskeletal measures that can aid in COVID-19 functionality measurements, like heart rate, oxygen level, oxygen saturation, and compare them from admission to discharge, looking for statistical differences. Our study was a retrospective study looking at de-identified medical data from a specific patient population. These patients were admitted to the inpatient acute rehabilitation unit following hospitalization for COVID-19 related causes. Initial rehabilitation diagnoses of critical illness myopathy, critical illness polyneuropathy, and pulmonary debility were included in the study. At admission and discharge, we, we extracted heart rate, oxygen level, oxygen saturation, gait distance, and quality indicator walking subscale scores. The walking subscale score involves measuring a patient's ability to walk 10 feet, walk 50 feet with two turns, and walk 150 feet. In addition, we looked at assistive device status and discharge disposition. Our study initially included 54 patients, which ended up including 48 after six were excluded due to their leaving against medical advice. The average length of rehab study in these patients was 11.6 days. 26 patients were discharged to home health, and 22 were discharged to home or self-care. Assistive devices at admission and at discharge are shown in the chart below. The results of our study showed differences from admission to discharge that are worth noting. The number of tachycardic patients decreased by 7. The number of patients using an assistive device increased by 23. The number of patients using oxygen decreased by 6. And the number of patients walking less than 100 feet decreased by 35. Quantitative measures showed a, a significant change from admission to discharge in four out of the five parameters we measured. These four include GG score, which is the QI indicator walking subscale score, gait distance, heart rate, and level of oxygen. Of note, this statistical significance was an improvement in these four measures. As the mean change in GG score was an increase of 11.54, the mean change in gait distance was an increase of 234.4 feet, the mean change in heart rate was a decrease of 4%, the mean change in oxygen saturation was a decrease of 0.28%, and the mean change of amount of oxygen used was a decrease of 46%. These statistically significant changes suggest that objective measures are worth incorporating in the generalized assessment of COVID-19 acute rehab progress and functional improvement. This data can be used as a starting point to consider using mean change of these objective measures to guide rehabilitation decisions in patients recovering from COVID-19. Future clinical use, after further research, could longitudinally compare these numbers from admission to discharge and, and find specific percent change benchmarks that can guide treatment goals, specifically in the realms of heart rate decrease, oxygen dependency decrease, total gait distance increase, and walking quality indicator score increase. We'd like to acknowledge Kylie Summers, Doctor of Physical Therapy, for her help, and the Oklahoma State University Center of Health Sciences, College of Osteopathic Medicine. Thank you.